Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hump Day Hangouts. It's episode 446. Today is the last day of May 2023. It's the 31st of May. And uh, we've got uh, quite a few questions to go through. Um, it's going to be, it looks like me and Bradley today. Chris is traveling. Um, so sadly, he couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, got a couple quick announcements going to share with you guys. And then uh, we'll get into the questions as well. So uh, first things first, uh, I know Bradley's mentioned this uh, the last few times. I think it's been about a month now we've been doing this, uh, but uh, vetted, V-E-T-T-T-E-D.com. Uh, we've got a 10% discount for anything at vetted um, if you use the code semantic. So just the word semantic, not semantic mastery, just one word you got to remember. Uh, but it's not just Bradley's uh, uh, stuff on there. Anything at vetted, uh, go check it out. Some really great stuff on there. Um, again, it works on anything. Um, other thing I wanted to say, if you are new to Semantic Mastery, we appreciate you checking out Hump Day Hangouts, or maybe you're watching the replay. If you can, go ahead and subscribe if you use YouTube. Uh, subscribe, hit up the channel. We only post uh, you know, pretty informational, highly informational content. Hump Day Hangouts, we chop up the videos and then post those. Occasionally, we do some polls, some other stuff, but uh, we really like it. It helps us uh, stay motivated, and also it, it allows you to quickly get notified when there's new content up. Um, so I see Bradley is back from taking care of the tech stuff in the background, so we'll take a break from Adam's uh, announcements to say hi to Bradley real quick. Bradley, how you doing? But I have to kill my video because uh, I'm on Wi-Fi at my folks' house because the internet com or the cable company has been working on the cable line in my area for two days now. I've been down without... Uh, you know, high speed business class internet that I'm typically used to. And it's, it's, it's like trying to fight with one arm tied behind your back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It sucks. So yesterday I was able to tether through my phone and get, be productive most of the day, albeit slower. Uh, but today, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if the Verizon tower is overcrowded because of the, you know, the outages around here or what, but I just couldn't tether. So I had to come over to my folks house and they've got a much, much slower connection. So it's been a bit of a struggle today to uh, get any productivity, you know, to, or to be productive, but somehow I still made it to hump the hangouts. So here I am. Uh, you guys don't have to look at my ugly mug for today. So consider yeah. yourself blessed. <laughs> oh man. Well, uh, I was going to ask you too. Let's see. We were uh, last week. We were telling people uh, the mastermind. You'd kicked off uh, the new training uh, with kind of a beta group, and I assume kind of smooth sailing over there with that stuff. Oh yes, no, no. It's uh, it's beta group. So there's, uh, but it's it, so. I mean, we're only in week two, and um, you know, with Monday being a holiday, it's a few people might be behind a bit, and that's fine. Uh, but it's a beta group, and so already I'm getting feedback on how to kind of reorganize stuff, and you know, finding gaps that need to be filled type type stuff but this is good uh it's it's good to have this small beta group uh we just actually we had somebody bow out earlier this week so or maybe it was the end of last week so we just um matthias who's in our group he also uh, asked to be a part of it which i'm excited about because i know he's an action taker so i mean it's just good because you know this is something that i've been working on for really kind of planning developing in my head for years and now it's finally the point where we're starting to pull it together and this beta group is is good because I'm getting a lot of good feedback and participation from the members, which was required. Uh, and within hopefully by the end of this year, um, probably sometime around Pofu Live, we'll be able to launch this, hopefully to the greater audience, uh, to those that, that feel like it would benefit them. So I'm excited about it. And I'm grateful for those that are in the beta group. Very nice. Uh, let's see. One quick thing I was going to mention is Pofu Live. Uh, we still have early bird tickets uh, available, so we're going to leave those up for a little bit to, uh, to give everybody a good chance before uh, we start have to uh, start tightening things up. But uh, pofulive.com, go check it out. It's the 29th and 30th of September, so last weekend in September is going to be in the Boston area. Um, looking at my whiteboard off the screen, I've got a few locations uh, we're narrowing it down to for the uh, venue. Um, as well as the VIP events. So we're getting that stuff lined up. Really looking forward to uh, seeing everybody there. Um, I'm trying to think the last one we did was in Denver. Is that right, Bradley? The last live. Yeah, in, in person. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so it's been, been a long time. Looking forward to seeing some new faces, uh, some old faces as well. Uh, we've got some fantastic uh, speakers lined up. We've already uh, got a few lined up and then we're waiting to hear back on some more. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to a few more people too. So we're going to have a really wide range um, of people talking digital marketing, uh, local SEO, really digging into stuff, uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff to come. So 
pofulive.com. Go check it out. Grab your ticket now. Uh, best time to grab it. And uh, hopefully we will see you there in Boston, September 29th and 30th. All right. That uh, wraps it up for me. Bradley, anything you wanted to cover before we jump into questions? No, but we don't actually have a lot of questions. So this is good. I, I, will... Fred, I thought we did, but well. No, we don't. Unless, let me see. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing. Um, well, there's a couple of questions from last week that I don't think got covered. So I'll try a couple of those first. Sorry, guys. I know you're not seeing my screen. Let me just clean this up a little bit. And then, um, no, I didn't have any other announcements. So, and we should, I can see a bunch of funny comments in the, uh, <laughs> in chat. So we'll get a chance to uh, probably yeah. um, participate or engage with the commenters a bit more today, which is good because sometimes we don't get to do that as much as I'd like to. So. Yeah, it's cool. Somebody said, hey, Bradley, you should spring for Starlink. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, I wonder funny. if that would work for video. Do you know anyone who's used it on for like Zoom calls? Uh, no, I haven't. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to find out soon enough. I So yesterday I bought a uh, F-350, Ford F-350 dually truck with a 6.7 liter turbocharged diesel. It's the biggest fucking vehicle I've ever owned in my life. It's freaking huge. And it's got the crew cab and an eight foot bed and every fifth wheel trailer hitch. And on Saturday, I'm going to look at a fifth wheel toy hauler. Uh, and if I get that on over the weekend, then I'm going to end up having Starlink so that I can start traveling out. My, my, my daughter's about to go to college. And since she's going to college, uh, it's going to free me up to kind of be a bit more mobile and have some freedom. And I want to try kind of traveling around a little bit. So I bought this big freaking ass truck last night. Swear to God, just bought it last night. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to look at a big fifth wheel trailer. So Starlink is something that's on my radar because I'm likely going to need that if I start traveling a bit. So I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. All right, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and hop in uh, to the questions. All right, I'm going to grab the screen and we're going to jump into it. So <laughs> is Cecilia here with the donkey? What's up <laughs> with the donkey, man? <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't even want to know. I'm going to grab the screen and let's get into it. And I saw somebody, I said, you're blessed. Consider yourself blessed. You don't have to look at my face. And Aaron says, blessed. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> Just so you know. All right. Let me get in here. Sorry. It's a bit challenging doing this from a laptop, guys. Move Adam's face. No. Okay. Start with Michael. I think this is a pretty good start from last week. There's a few that I missed. What would be the best structure for a directory site from scratch in the USA, subdomain states, states as categories? Should the country have a main page that feeds down, a, or excuse me, the county have a main page that feeds down, feeds a silo down to all cities? What software do you recommend? Okay, so there's a lot of questions here. Um, so do a USA based, if you're going to do a country specific directory, which, you know, I kind of recommend that. It, it, at least that's really the intent of my own directory is just a USA based directory. Um, I do know that some people have registered company, tree, con tree contractors in Canada have registered. I've also had some Australian tree contractors register, but I typically go in and un, uh, unapprove those listings or just don't approve them. Um, but so I, I, you know, it makes sense to have a country specific directory. If you want to have other countries, then perhaps you would do those on subdomains of whatever the main root domain uh, directory domain would be or brand, if that makes sense. I, so I, I agree with that, but I would do a uh, country based. So USA based directory and then, if you're using, it depends on, I guess, how you're going to build it out. Uh, I'm using WP Geo Directory or Geo Directory. Uh, WPGeodirectory.com is the URL. I think we have an affiliate link somewhere, Adam, if you want to post that. But um, Geo Directory kind of builds the hierarchy into the URLs and you have different options. Uh, you can go model what I've got set up on treecarehq.com if you'd like, um, just to kind of look at that. That's, that's Geo Directory. And uh, they, it's the URL structure that I selected. And it, it, it works, it works good. Um, you know, I've not done a ton of SEO work to my directory, believe it or not, though. So there may be better ways to structure that um, than what I currently have set up. But I haven't really done a lot of SEO work specifically to the directory because it ranks to generate leads for my agency, right? Uh, I'm, I'm doing more work right now with the kind of rank and rent lead gen stuff with what I call the directory hybrid agency. And so more SEO work is going to be um, starting to be applied to the directory site itself. Uh, in fact, I'm currently working on some of those right now um, that I'm streaming on Twitch in the mornings. So, you know, I will have some more kind of insight on that in the, in the coming weeks, as far as, uh, you know, perhaps structuring the URLs in different ways, it might be better than way, the way GeoDirectory has it now. 
Uh, but that's a little bit premature for me to kind of um, talk about that now, if that makes sense. So I, again, I, if, it, it depends on really how you're going to be building out the directory. If you're going to be doing it manually, then there's, there's a number of ways to do it. Uh, obviously, I can't get into that now. It would take too long, but it would be something worth diagramming out. Um, whenever you're thinking about doing a big site, if you're going to be building out the structure manually and it's not something that is you know, pre-configured depending on the builder you're using, then it, it makes sense to take the time to build something out, map it out, like diagram it out. Seriously, because the problem is if you go into a big kind of site build too hastily and you don't have it mapped out, then as you start to add more and more stuff to the site and things like that, it becomes kind of cumbersome to manage. And, um, and it, it, it's not, it's not, it, it's better to just take more time up front and kind of map it out and think through it uh, because it makes it simpler to manage, right? Easier to manage and easier to expand and scale on. So uh, again, it's all, it's going to standard SEO answer applies here. It depends, <laughs> right? <laughs> what, what is the answer? Well, it depends. It depends on many different variables. Um, I think geo directory is a good structure for the URL because uh, it's, it's been working well for generating leads from agency, but as far as for ranking the actual individual listing pages and things like that, that's still debatable. Like I've, it's still up, it's still questionable. I know James Slattery uh, has got a, a plan or a, a, a training course coming out for directories. It's on a, it uses, he uses a different format or different platform than GeoDirectory. I'm anxious to see it. I've not reviewed it, but um, he says it's a hell of a lot simpler and easier to manage and set up. So I would be on the lookout for that. I know he's going to be launching that like very, very soon. And uh, take a look at maybe perhaps his training on, on a directory too, because I, I'm, I'm actually curious to see how, what, his, what his setup is as well. So hopefully that makes sense. What software do you recommend to populate auto auto populate the businesses throughout the country while you're building out the cities? Uh, I've mentioned that last week, actually. I think so. I went. I think I might have covered this, or at least somebody asked a similar question. Um, D7 Lead Finder, Lead Scrape. Those are two that I've used in the past. So D7 Lead Finder. That's an online version. It's quite expensive, uh, but it gets the job done fairly fairly quickly. Um, Lead Scrape is a desktop software. It's inexpensive. You can buy a yearly license, a business license for two forty seven dollars a year. It's good. It, it works well. It's a resource hog, though. Um, or you could do something like more pay as you go, which is what I'm using right now called Outscraper. I think it's outscraper.io or something. Just go to Google and search Outscraper, Google Maps, something like that, and it'll pop right up. And uh, that's a pay as you go. So that, that's currently what we're using to, to scrape data and co companies. Okay. Best monetization strategy for me is just to use it as a, a conversation starter for my ideal prospect, which are tree service contractors. So um, that's the monetization strategy I've always gone with with the directory. There's a number of others that you can do. You can sell premium listings. You can sell advertising uh, space. You know, you can. There's a, a bunch of things that you can do with it. Uh, what I'm teaching in the directory hybrid agency model is to actually build, use the directory for prospecting for both lead gen buyers and or um, asset renters, right? So people that can lease rank and rent assets, or they can pay per lead, depending on how you monetize lead gen stuff, as well as selling a uh, kind of premium direct or premium directory listing becomes part of a bundled package of services that we, we offer to sell as part of the directory hybrid agency training. So that we're always constantly trying to promote our own brand, our own agency. We are using our eight, our own brand, our directory brand to promote the client and to get them more exposure, but we're using their budget to power up our directory, our assets, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what I'm teaching in the directory hybrid agency. So I, I think that's a, a far superior monetization strategy because that way you're always collecting revenue from clients and, and benefiting your own assets with it. And again, it's kind of a unique strategy that I've been developing uh, that I, I, I feel is, 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 a, is a great way to, for us to, in the SEO industry, to start building our own businesses while we're building our clients as well, right? Instead of the other way around where we're constantly working on just our clients' businesses. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Um, it was a great series of questions. Next one is from Mike. Hi, what SOP can we get from we if we join the mastermind? Oh my God, there's just a list of them. What categories and how many SOPs are there? Uh, SEO related SOPs, mostly uh, Google business profile SOP, the directory processes that I just talked about, prospecting and sales, um, lead generation, so how to generate leads for your agency, uh, how to build local sites, um, geo-relevance, all that kind of stuff. That's We're working on that right now, actually, in the mornings uh, on Twitch. You can glean a lot of information just from my Twitch channel. Just go to twitch.tv and look for Bradley Benner. 
or twitch.tv slash Bradley Benner. You will go directly to my Twitch channel and you guys can sift through raw video footage there and see a lot of that stuff that is available and what, currently what I'm working on. Um, but there's a lot of SOPs that are currently in development and there's a bunch out there already, mostly SEO related and how to run SEO agency. That's precisely what, what we teach, right? Local SEO, local SEO and local SEO agency related processes. Hopefully that's clear. Mike, there's a bunch of them, man. You won't be disappointed, man. For what we're charging is ridiculous. We we are way underpricing the value that you get from our mastermind. And that is not a that is not like bullshit. Uh, just ask people in our mastermind. So, um, it's up to you. I would encourage you to check it out. Justin says, hey, guys, can you comment on this? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to go look at this. It's not typically something I would do on without previewing it first. So you take a quick review of it. And if it's going to take too long, I'll skip it and cover it next time. If I can get back to my browser somehow. Zoom has got it all screwed up. The canonical, canonical link element is not recommended for those who wish to avoid duplication by syndication partners because the pages are often very different. The most effective solution is for partners to block indexing of your content for more, see avoid article duplication in Google News, which also has advice about blocking syndicated content from Google search. Um, I'm not sure what, what is the question for though? I'm not really sure I understand. I got to, Zoom is covering, I can't get back to the screen now. So sorry guys. Um, do we need to do something different? One of our, on our money sites and or our IFTT syndication properties regarding canonicals now. No, because we're not adding canonicals anywhere, Justin, for syndicated content. Remember, we're using an attribution link. That is different than a canonical. An attribution link is where you're citing the source, just like you would go do when you would cite a reference in a, you know, in a paper, when writing a paper for college or something like that, you're citing a source. That's what an attribution link is. And that's what we teach in Syndication Academy, is that you, 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 you code in a link and either the RSS feed itself, which can be done with most of the our uh, SEO plugins, right? So you can code in an attribution link there so that it's part of the RSS feed. Or you can code in an, an RSS or excuse me, an attribution link into the uh, IFTTT applet, okay? Which is how we have done it now because, you know, we so, there was a period of time where they're the only plugin that had, that you could, that automatically, where you could code in an attribution link into the RSS feed was Yoast. And Yoast is a junk plugin in my opinion, uh, and, and I didn't like using Yoast. So we instead switched it up to where we put the attribution links into the applets. Does that make sense? But that is different than a canonical. So the attribution link is a, is a public facing link that is a contextual link or a link within at the bottom of the content appended to the bottom of the content stating this post was originally published on and it can be, it can precede the content or it can uh, so be prepended or appended to the content. In other words, it doesn't matter where you place it. The point is, is you're giving credit to where the original source of that article was. Similar to press releases. When press releases published, there's always the source and all of the syndication partners reference that source. Does that make sense? That is exactly what a, an attribution link is. So uh, it's not the same as a canonical. Tony says, regarding uh, using an expired domain and building an auto blogging website, it's a great idea. Just one question, do you restore the expired domain from the Wayback Machine first? We just build the website straight on the expired domain. I'm just building them straight on the expired domain. What I have found is that if you are going to put similar content in the same kind of topical topical category or a related, very closely related topical category, that it doesn't matter. There's no, there's no problem with getting the in, uh, pro, the domain indexed right away. Like, uh, I've not had any issues with that at all. Where I found it to be troublesome, it was in the past with getting domains and then changing the topical categories like completely. And then, uh, you know, sometimes those are, are much more difficult to get indexed or and they don't, they don't perform as well. Um, but if you're using replacing or putting new content onto the domain that is similar to or related to the former content, the former topical category, then it tends to have no issues whatsoever. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and, and part of that is because if you've ever tried to restore an old site, it's, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And it's, it's almost more work to try to restore an old site than it is to just build a new one. And so for a while, I did both. We, we, we tested with both. And I didn't see any benefit to doing one over the other. In fact, I, I saw a bit of a drawback from, well, excuse me, I did see benefit from doing just new content because it was less work. 
if that makes sense. So we could be more efficient. So, but I would encourage you to do a little bit of testing on your own too, because I did testing for a, a couple of months on that. And I found really no benefit of um, restoring the old content. If I was able to get the new content indexed as quickly as I can, right? There was really no drawback for, uh, or no reason to continue trying to go through the hassle of rebuilding expired content, like old content, which was kind of a pain in the ass. So Chris says, has anyone tried on pages AI new stealth one click article writer and how the quality may compare with some other alternatives? Uh, I have not. Um, I saw a video where, of course, the dev makes some bold claims use as main money site content pass AI detection. Um, but I've heard good things about the on page in general. Yeah, I think it's a great tool. I've not actually used much of the um, writing component of it. I still use it mainly for the relevancy tools for um, link relevancy and predictive guest posts and things like that. So that I, that's mainly what I use it for. But I've heard a lot of really good things. Adam, if you're still on, can you comment about it? I know you, you mentioned just earlier today that you heard that it was one of the best. Yeah, uh, haven't actually used it. So yeah, I can't uh, chime into that just from people I've talked to who use it and then in comparison to content at scale and a couple other tools. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have not used, which probably the part of the reason I've not upgraded to and, and tested with that is because we, for our agency, we use content at scale and um, that's expensive, but incredibly good. And so I've just not really tested with any alternatives uh, just because that's working well for us. So, but I have heard really good things about it. Um, so, but I haven't tried it myself, to be honest with you. I think on page is a great tool for the relevancy tools, which is what I use it for. Uh, but I'm sure that some of the other ones is great, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Eric's, uh, been following Eric for a long, for many, many years and, um, you know, respect him highly. So I think, I think it's a great tool. There's no question. Anyway, last question on the sheet, and then we can get to comments. Uh, let's see. Steve says, I've seen you pull up this site to show reports, but just visiting it doesn't help figure out how much it costs, how to sign up. What is the main site I need to visit? Um, that's Bright Local. Those are Bright Local reports. That's just their white label reporting domain so that we can deliver white label reports to clients. Um, you can do that with a Bright Local account. You can set it because they, they allow you. I, I don't know. You might have to have a certain subscription level. I don't, I don't know. I've been at a high level for a long time. So I don't know, um, but regardless, you have the ability or the option to create white label reports. So you can, a, a, you know, brand reports for your own agency and then send that local marketing reports domain. Uh, the reports will be on that domain. So you can send them to your clients with your agency's branding on them, if that makes sense. So um, that's just bright local reports, man. I've been, you know, there's flaws with all of them. Uh, I've got issues with bright local, but I've been using them for, like 10 years now. Uh, so it is what it is. All right. Okay. That was fairly simple. Not very many questions today. So let's get into comments. Cecilia, uh, what's up, Richard? And I had a great call with <clears throat> Captain Morgan today, which is <laughs> uh, David. We had, a, I, we had a call this morning. It was great chatting with you today, David. Good, good, good uh, to finally meet meet you and actually chat with you. So, looking forward to seeing what um we talked about today if it materializes. Richard and Samo, what's up, and Samo? Starlink. I probably will get it. Aaron Powell. Yes, you are blessed. I've got a face made for radio. I know, <laughs> and that's okay. Let's see, Starlink is amazing. No kidding. Okay, cool. That's good to know, Richard. I'll have to check on that. Um, I mean, it's like I said, it's. If I end up getting that trailer or that uh, camper, I'm definitely going to need it. So, <laughs> Cecilia, we had our one, our Phantom One Star reviewer hit my client again. Any way to find reviewer's address? I have <laughs> James is on a rampage. No, I'm sorry, man. I don't know of any way to. Um, there are a couple services out there that will fight. Hey, look at digital here. That's I think that's Clint. Um, What's up, man? Uh, I think there are a couple of services that will that claim that they can remove bad reviews or fake reviews. Um, I've not looked into any of them, to be honest, but I'm, you might be able to find some of them. And I'm sure there are some. I've just not tested any of them. So uh, and I don't know that those services that help remove fake reviews give you the uh, reviewer's address. <laughs> you know what I mean? I doubt that. That would be um, funny if they did. And it says, quick question. If I join the mastermind, 
do you keep it up to date? I mean, I've watched the past seven months of hump day and you say you use the things then you, now you don't. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, that's why we have a mastermind instead of selling courses, Aaron, because it, there's no, it's just, it's almost impossible to keep courses updated. Things are changing too quickly in the SEO industry. So it just doesn't make any sense to sell one-off courses anymore. Uh, that's why we do the mastermind because everything's updated. Every, every, I do a webinar every single, or a, I host an event every Thursday, right? Every other Thursday, it's the SEO webinar, which is me doing training and over the shoulder stuff and answering questions and all that kind of stuff. And it's usually a two hour webinar that's every other Thursday. And then on the other Thursdays we have build with Bradley, which is a zoom meeting. It's a discussion group uh, where you're expected to turn on your camera or, or at least your microphone and have a discussion about SEO running an agency, whatever. And we do that every other Thursday. So everything is always up to date. Um, and in the SOPs and uh, which I build on and then update accordingly, we're currently in the process of updating a bunch of those right now. Uh, and will be for the next several weeks. So again, come join the mastermind, Aaron, and check it out for yourself. We keep everything up to date, I promise. Congratulations on the truck, Bradley. Thank you, Anselmo. It's the biggest damn vehicle I've ever bought in my life. It's freaking huge. It's massive. And honestly, it's a bit intimidating driving it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's going to take me a while to get used to it. I'm going to have to go buy a, like a small used car now to drive around town because I'm certainly not driving this big ass truck all over the place. It's stupid big. It's like ridiculously big. <laughs> so anyway, pre-blessed browser. That's funny. Awesome, David. Yeah, David, uh, David's going to be on vetted. It looks like to be selling stacks, drive stacks. Um, we had a conversation this morning, David. It's all right. And I'm sharing this, but like I said, we're, when you get that service live, we're going to, ha we're happy to promote it. Um, I'm excited to be working closely with somebody that um, I respect. This is going to be awesome. So looking forward to it, man. Hope, hope you run with it and I hope it treats you very well. And I suspect it will. James says, I have PBN lab. It's great for finding possible local links. Just wondering how you would go about finding backlinks for affiliate stuff. Would citation flow be more relevant the way trust flow is for local? No, no, no. Citation flow, James, is a measure of link quantity, not quality. And actually, like I said, I don't, I really don't give a damn about trust flow metrics or citation flow metrics either um, until, until there's relevance, right? If they're relevant, then those metrics become more important. Um, you know what I mean? Like, hopefully that's clear, but the same, if for affiliate stuff, it's all about relevance, topical relevance, right? Geographic relevance isn't really necessary in that case. So I would focus on topical relevance for building links to affiliate pages or, uh, you know, feeder pages, buffer pages, et cetera. But again, as I always you know, teach for local, even if I was going to do affiliate stuff, guys, which I don't, I just do local. But if I was going to do affiliate stuff, I would build a brand, right? An affiliate brand of some sort, some sort of brand that, because, and I would build authority to the brand. Um, and that, that's what I would do. And so I would, you know, niche down, uh, have an affiliate brand that would be specific to a, a topical category, right? Product or service category, essentially. And then I would kind of focus in on that and try to build topical authority around that you know, product or service. And that's what, that's how I would approach it now. And then I would use uh, the, my link building method, right? Which is finding that in addition to whatever works, but currently top, top, finding links with topical relevance works really well. So why not use that to, and again, if you're kind of niche down an affiliate brand that you're building around a particular product or, you know, product or service, so a, a product category, et cetera, then you can build topical authority there and use the methods that I teach for um, building relevant backlink profile too. That makes sense. So hopefully that's clear. I wouldn't change my strategy. Link building is link building. The difference is with local, there's, like I said, two kind of things to look for, topical relevance and geographic relevance. And if you can find link sources that have relevance and you can verify that there's relevance, then those kind of third-party metrics come in the or, or, or become important in my opinion that's how i gauge everything right now if first i look for relevance and then as a secondary metric i'll look at things like the actual trust flow number or per even ahrefs or Moz's metrics too like though if i'm weighing different link sources and and I, and i can determine there's relevance across all of them then that's when those other metrics come into play if that makes sense 
Uh, Cecilia says Aaron Powell mastermind is every Thursday. So I would say that's pretty consistently updated. Agreed. Thank you, Cecilia. Your checks in the mail. Michael says, Oh, Hey Vance. Uh, okay. I don't need to write, read all of them. Sorry. I thought that was a auto populate businesses. Yost got to go. Somebody David says, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Their recommendation is that syndicated content should be set to no index. That's what the recommendation is. Okay. Yoast got to go. Okay. Upgrade your SEO skills and use the best SEO plugin on the planet, which is anything not Yoast. <laughs> I like SEO Press. I've been using that recently and I like that. Um, I like that plugin. Uh, stop the madness. We need to go in and write a land flipping question. We actually skated by today without one. That's interesting. Uh, let's not jinx that. I definitely need to get into the mastermind. Simply e-beats. I agree with that. I'll agree with that. Anytime someone says it, uh, Michael says, <laughs> does it come with training wheels? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's only the links with top the trust flow that show the topical relevance on PBN. Yes, exactly. Right. That's, that's correct. You have to have a trust flow value of at least one in order for it to be, have a topical trust flow category. And remember guys, that's not always perfect either. Um, but it's, it's a pretty good indication in it. I always start there, right? You can do a deeper analysis on the link, you know, the domains that you're going to use as potential link sources and look at those to determine if there is truly relevance there. Um, but yeah, I agree. You, you have to have a trust flow value of at least one in order for it to have a top of a trust flow category. It's an opportunity for rabbit holes and my bag of rabbits is empty. <laughs> Cecilia, that's because you keep throwing them out there to run, chase down different holes. Uh, that's funny. She does that to me every morning. Working down the GBP SOP, is it okay to build a new YouTube channel for clients out on my own Gmail account? Yeah, you can. You certainly can. In fact, I think I was having a chat with Cecilia about that the other uh, earlier this week or last week. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, it's when building out like lead gen assets, guys, it makes sense to set up a workspace account. And with workspace, you're limited. You're not able to create a YouTube channel for 30 days, the first 30 days of a paid workspace account. So it makes sense to, uh, you know, if, if you're not building out lead gen assets, then it, you, you don't need to do that. You can create a YouTube channel under your own main Gmail account and then always assign managers and actually transfer ownership at a later time to different Gmail profiles. So there's no reason not to do that. Six degree social, how do you access local marketing reports? Uh, that, you mean the question I answered five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago? Um, it's bright local. That, yeah, bright local. It's local marketing reports. It's their white label domain. Uh, James says, what's what's it like using on pages predictive link compared to majestic topics? Um, well, they're, they're, they're different topical cat. They're, in other words, on page uses uh, Google's natural language AI, or excuse me, API. Um, and so the categories, the topical categories that on page shows you is from is what Google has determined are the topical categories of the referring pages or domains, depending on how you set up the um, predictive link building campaign, right? You have an option to do either the, the URL or the domain. Um, and so basically it, it goes and scans either the URL or the domain and then determines what the primary topical categories are of the domain depending on, again, which way you set it up. And it's going to give you the assignments that Google has determined are the topical categories that the main content area or the, the main topical category of the page or the domain is about, and then assign a confidence score. Those topical categories have a lot of similarities to topical trust flow categories in Majestic, but they're not the same. There are oftentimes very, you can line a lot of them up, you can find a good match, but they're not the same. So you just got to use, you know, logic, like, Seriously, uh, analyze the topical categories from Google's natural language uh, to and compare that to Majestic's topical trust flow categories and look for matching categories or closely related categories that you can match up. And that's all we do, right? That's what we do. So hopefully that's clear. All right, guys, I know it's early, but I don't see any other questions. And I'm kind of a hand tied, you know, hog tied yeah. here with this stupid laptop and everything so maybe we'll wrap it up early what do you think can we do uh, that are you good with that yeah i gotta run and uh, i got a neighborhood kid i'm mentoring on his little engineering project uh, at five so yeah we'll uh we'll take it where we can get it because some days it goes long and some days it don't so i see that and um just let me just double check one more time for questions i'm having so hard time navigating this laptop <laughs> screen 
it, it's, yep. it's driving me nuts. Thanks for the answers, Bradley. Great stuff. You're welcome, James, as always, man. My pleasure. Uh, last thing. Yeah, I didn't see any other questions pop in, so we're good to go. All right, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, sorry about kind of being um, off a bit today, but it is what it is. At least I made it, and we will see you guys. Uh, there is a Build with Bradley group meeting tomorrow for the Mastermind, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, so be there or be square. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week.